I'm just curious, like, how did you manage this whole thing of like working that job while also building up your land business to the point where you had enough income to pull the plug on your job? Like, how did you juggle those things? Nine months was kind of when I started going full speed on my mailings and taking it a little more a little more seriously. You know, I had dabbled, sent a couple mailers of 40, 50 to a few counties, kind of testing the markets. But when I started sending 300, 500 a week postcards, that's when it really skyrocketed. I got a couple big deals and that gave me the financial confidence to jump ship and haven't looked back. It's been amazing. Did you use a lot of seller financing or selling on terms to kind of cover the practicals of your overhead personally in your business? Or are you just primarily doing cash? How did you set it up? Like, cause that's what people want to know is like the practicals of, okay, I really want to quit my job and do land full time, but how do I bridge that gap? Right? Because there's, there's a, if you just do cash, there might be a cash flow issue there. Right? So how did you overcome that? There was, um, and for a while while I dabbled and still to this day, I only have one note. It was all organic growth through cash sales. So in the beginning I I'd sell one and have to wait two months or something, you know, for it to sell and then just kind of wait, wait it out. And I didn't want to borrow money. I did pull 6,600 bucks out of my 401k to just kind of start mailings back when I started dabbling and then pieced it all together slowly and worked it as best as I could. There were days when I would, I would sell one and have a closing, you know, two or three days later and just, I'll say this. I had a buddy who was willing to invest or lend to me, which gave me the confidence to mail and pursue deals. Um, I think that that confidence helped a lot. I'm just knowing I had that kind of safety net of financing if I needed it. Yeah, that seems to be a, a common thing I've heard from people is having access to that kind of cash. Um, yeah. It's one of those points of friction where it's like you're going to run out of money at some point. So like when that happens, what next? What so yeah. that makes sense. Just curious, what market are you in primarily? So I live in Houston, Texas area. Um, and I've focus primarily in Texas. Um, I mean, there's plenty of land, plenty of count 200 plus counties in Texas. Um, I've done one deal out of state in Utah, but, uh, and a few kind of in East Texas, but I've mainly focused kind of on the coastal destination regions. Um, I found kind of these RVers is one of my bread and butters. They buy these lots just to put a little cement slab on them. And that's honestly a 60% of my business is just focusing on that type of stuff. Coastal markets. It can, I mean, you can get lots for 5,000 bucks, sell them for 20, 25. I mean, it's, so it, it can be, can be nice. Yeah. Most people don't think of uh, coastal land in Texas, but there's a huge coastline. Right. But- Never said the water was pretty, but. <laughs> yeah, I'm curious. So if I'm understanding right, so you've only ever worked in Texas then, right? Have you ever explored any other states? So I did do Utah. I had that one deal and I did a little in Utah. Mm-hmm. Um, I've mailed, I had a buddy in Virginia. I kind of reached out to him. We kind of worked together, but it's honestly the ease of getting the list has been my differentiating factor yeah. and the like the quality of the county data. Mm -hmm. Um, and their, their CAD system, how, how well it's set up. And because if it's, you can't view it, view the parcels in CAD data and things like that. It's really hard for me to do it remotely from, you know, this room. So, yeah. And um, and where are you getting your list? Uh, I go directly from the County. Uh, I, I initially did try agent pro two, four, seven and list source. But man, I was getting so many return mails Mm -hmm. and, but they're at the end of the day, they're extracting the data from the County anyways. Mm -hmm. Um, So I figured I'd just go straight to the source, right? 
Uh, you mentioned earlier that you uh, started off doing postcards. Are you still doing postcards or have you looked at blind offers at all? hundred percent postcards. Um, I've never liked the idea of blind offers because you know, you're going off a percentage of the appraised value. Um, one example, if I would have been doing blind offers, I bought a lot for $50. My third deal was for $50. Um, if I would have gone off appraisal, I would have bought it for a thousand. People tell you so much over the phone about the area, about their lot. You just kind of say, well, so well, tell me a little about it. And they just, they love to talk. Mm -hmm. And I, I do well on the phone, uh, just from sales and things like that, but you can't discount the phone. And I, I've learned that you learn that real quick. Yeah. Um, and so that's, that's really interesting to hear that. Cause I, something that I hear a lot of people hating on all the time <laughs> is postcards and yep. lists from the County, which, and I totally get why, I mean, does, I mean, in most counties anyway, apparently not in Texas, but in a lot of counties, it is a huge pain to get that list and then sort it. And then postcards do require more time on the phone. You know, people understandably don't really like that, but I think you also make really good points too about like you get a lot of information if you are willing to get on the phone and you can potentially pull more deals out of a campaign and get them for better prices. So it's direct mail is a lot cheaper with postcards too. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's not something you want to just like across the board. Nope. They never make sense because they do in some cases, especially depending on what you enjoy doing and what you're good at doing.